5 p.m. Uh, uh, busy agenda here. First item is uh, approved minute meeting minutes of January 10th, 2018. I was not here, so I will stay silent. I did want you. Second, okay, approved. Okay, everybody accept to that. Okay, comments from the public? Anybody have any comments? No. Okay, moving on, special first item is, uh, our next item, special topic is employee group health insurance for fiscal year 2019. Brian? Sure. I'll start in, and Lynn can correct me when I go wrong. I think you got a good handle on it. Unfortunately. So just by way of background, um, Tom Waitley is a member of the Hampshire um, County Insurance Trust, and that's where it gets its medical insurance plans for employees, and those plans are administered by Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the trust provides a a single set of plans, so there's there's not many options in the trust. There's HMO, PPO, and MedEx. Well, HMO and PPO for the active <coughs> employees, and MedEx for the retirees. Yeah. Um, and this over this past year, Hampshire County Group Returns Trust has uh, proposed changes to the benefits for fiscal year 19. Um, so. Just to sum up those changes, they're increasing co-pays um, for the medical visits. Um, there's a sheet here that... That's the same with this package, this comparison here? Um, that, that, it's a little bit different. Oh. This compares... Um, oh, I see. The changes from... From current to... Trust current to... Okay. Which is what similar to that other one, but not exactly. Right. Yeah. So there's an extra page. Well, on the, the memo, the first page of the memo, the benefits in the existing plan are what Maya is right. proposing. So that, yep. that's why they're very yeah. similar. Yep. Yeah. They should be anyway. So Maya did a good job. Well, the chart you just passed out was the current plan last year versus the current year versus the coming year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so based on our, our past discussions uh, with the board, <laughs> Lynn and I got in touch with Maya and asked them if they could replicate the Hampshire County Insurance Trust that we currently have and what that would cost. So that's what the comparison is on, on this um, first page here. And so if you see some of the comparisons, there's, there's a small difference in primary care, physician copay, Increase in specialist copay, emergency room copay, <clears throat> increase for copays to provide that imaging inpatient hospital, um, outpatient surgical copay, and the the trust is the Hampshire County Trust is um, implementing a pharmaceutical deductible one hundred dollars uh, per subscriber, two hundred dollars um, per family for retail pharmaceuticals. So it gives you gives you an idea of what the changes are, yeah. and I, I, the the reasoning behind the changes are, are to help keep the premium increases down. Um, so from from 18 to 19, um, the premium increase for the trust is um, the average premium increase is four and a half percent. Without those changes, it would have been closer to nine and a half percent. So like I said before, um, Lynn and I contacted Maya and we, we wanted to figure out what those rates were, if we could replicate the plan. Um, and they were able to do that. Maya provides its, its members with um, the flexibility to alter plan benefits, whereas the trust is, a, this, is what, this is what we offer group-wide. Maya provides some flexibility to, to make changes to plan benefits to help with the overall premium costs. <clears throat> so uh, we did the comparisons, and we did a comparison based on our, our current number of subscribers and types of plans, and the total premiums that we would pay for the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust. 
um, compared to Maya, there, there was a savings of around $25,000. For the, just the town or across the board for town and employees combined? But for town and employees combined. Right. And how is that divided? It's divided based on the proportion of, of, of the plan. So the overall calculation is the town would save around $18,000 okay. on that. And the employees would save about 7000 Correct. And uh, do you happen to know what percentage increase or decrease that would be compared to what we're doing paying this year? So for example, one of the charts has like historically how much did rates go up? So if we just pretend it just fill in the blank, how much did our health insurance, would our health insurance rates go up percentage-wise if we go to MIAA? Is that actually a negative number? Or is it zero, or is it, still it goes up a little bit, but, because um, I know every year it, it generally does go So up. compare Maya FY19 to Hampshire County 18? Yeah. I've, I've, um, I don't have a calculation, but I believe it was slightly lower. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. So zero-ish. Zero-ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's close enough. Isn't that what your other table? Yeah, we can get it here. Um, Big table. <coughs> okay. We can look at 18 rates. Yeah. Oh, you're only comparing right? And they compare them to 19, so. Over. <coughs> oh, these are actual dollars. Or percentages. But are you questioning some of them? Are, no, I'm just I'm just looking at where. So over, like there are some individual lines here that go up and some that go down. So the two that go up, um, my is slightly higher for. Um, single PPO, PPO and, and Medex, right? Yeah. But because they're de they're lower on all these others, it's probably a wash. And the number of compared people. to what we're paying now. If you've got the number of subscribers, we have okay. one subscriber for the uh, employee only PPO, uh -huh. and we have nine Medex. Yeah. Most of our subscribers are HMO. But, but it's also been, a, it, it's also, and forgive me if, I jump, if I'm jumping ahead and telling me to stop, but it's also not a true apples to apples comparison because the structural deficit of the Hampshire Trust has been clouded or protected by <coughs> their spending of their reserves. Yeah. If we, right. Yes, if we try to look at a historical right. average of their right. increase. It's difficult to do because they've, because they spent the reserves, yes, which right. we, which don't exist anymore, so we can't right. rely on. So past performance does not necessarily indicate future. Exactly. <laughs> not, exactly. Yeah. Not for, not for the trip. Not, not for, for the Hampshire Trust. Not for the Hampshire Trust. Right. 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 If we want, let, let's talk about how, how uh, premium adjustments are calculated for the trust and for Maya. So the trust, the Hampshire Trust, does it, everything group wide. A group-wide increase based on the based on the um, really the lost history of the group as a whole. Their actuarial tables, actuarial tables, tables yeah. and they take into account. Yep, all that stuff, and it's and divided up equally. Yeah. So everybody, it's a good year. Everybody gets lower, uh -huh. lower increase. It's a bad year. Everybody might get a little bit higher. Um, uh -huh. In terms of the trust, <coughs> so trust year one. So we have sort of a three-year plan that they've talked about with us. Trust, if we were to go to Maya, year one is what's quoted. Um, year two would be the average. So what Maya does is Maya calculates a range each year. So premium increases for FY19, I'll use that as an example, for its members we're going to be between 0 and 11% with an average of was four and a half to four point six percent. So, is it an average or a medium? It's an average. Right. And based on a member's individual loss history, so your loss ratio, which is money that went out to pay claims versus the premiums you pay in, that's where you get you get put on that range. 
So if you have good, if you have some good claims here, so you're going to be under the average. Yep. If you have some not so great ones, you're going to be above the average. So, so if I'll back up a little bit, year one for my would be what's quoted. Year two is the average of of that range because they don't have, they feel they don't have a sufficient loss history um, okay. to apply. The average. The average. Okay. Yep. And <coughs> year three would be a, a, a blended rate of our actual claims history and the average. And then year four, it's how everybody, how it's calculated as I just did. And that average is all of the municipalities that fall under the that are members of the Maya insurance plan of the medical right of the medical insurance and I wish the history is only Waitley what's that yeah. but the history is only Waitley I get that but they're average, what they're saying is the average of zero to eleven percent that's the right. average of all their municipal member municipalities right. yeah. the number that yeah. the number that would make more sense because Maya has you know, I, a couple hundred municipalities in their in their in their group, ranging in, in, from in, in towns of all sizes and number of, of employees and retirees covered of of a, of a small number and a large number, depending upon the community. The average range that is germane to Waitley are the communities that are our size and have the number a similar number of people that the that the town is covered. Having Boston in, the, in or, or, or a larger community, it, 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 it's, it's apples and oranges because they get the economies of scale that, that the smaller communities don't. So I'm more curious about what the average increase is for like communities. And I'm not sure we have that number. Yeah, with that, do you think they might have that available? But, but you, don't, you don't know if you're, if we're, in the group with Boston, there could be an advantage because they could be paying no, but, more. Than but we're not. That we benefits. won't be. I'm, I'm just saying that their average. It, it's not a true average because there are communities that may skew it. Um, right. Where it doesn't matter what Boston does for what our premium increases or or or, or decreases may be. In Other years communities out, will in never. Years, in years out, it will out. never matter. Right. Yeah. Well, other, other than the total that my has to deal with, they're part of the total. Right. No. True, but, but they're, gonna, they're not going to use. They're not going to average it out over all of the towns. No, they, 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 they only in the first couple of years do we get that advantage. Yeah. So, yeah, there might be an advantage to be averaged in with a large number, right. like. But in going Boston. forward, it's just us. But they won't do that going forward. They will we'll only have that advantage in the first couple of years. I think right. is what that's. More or less what I'm hearing here, that you sort of get weaned off that first, we don't have your claims history, so we'll just do the, the average. Uh, and then as yeah. you progress, they'll start, they'll start blending in a little bit of, well, here's what the average did, and then here's what your little group of Four. N less than 50, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so, the average of, of, the average is based on the, what the actuary provides right. as to what. Right. Huh. That's what but, but, but still, the larger cities are part of the total, and Maya has to has to make up the total with all the communities that are involved. Not going forward, they don't. But not after year well, three. Well, no, but it's not not, not for no not for for us. It based it's on your claims history, but still they have to meet their their total obligation, and. If uh, say Boston is low on their claims, and all other small communities are high, well, we're going to get some of that shift from Boston into that pot for high communities. No, no, that's no, what he's saying. Because no. they have to yeah. well, they have to make up the total amount of premium somewhere. That, that's not the way and, they operate. Well, well, what I'm hearing from from Brian is that that's not the case. In after year three, your rates are going to go up according to your small groups. Rate, right, right. Within, within that range. But yeah. you're within that, you're in that range, and, how, hard they, cap on and how they on set the that range is, is dependent on the total they get. 
right? So, so you're saying indirectly Indeed. because maybe the rain is impacted range. potentially. Potentially, right? I see. Because if they have to make up, say, 11 percent every year or, or in, a, in a given year, because some communities paid out more in claims, they've got to spread that 11 percent for the next year to get it back somehow. And yeah, we're in that range, maybe that we could have been a, a fewer claims, so we're on the lower end of the percent, and the others are on the higher percent, to make up that total 11 percent that they were, or whatever they were shortfall. Yeah, but- They're, they're not gonna lose money from one year to another. No, but I guess the point, the point that, I, that I'm focused on is, our 40 individuals who are coming, no. however number, yeah. that, whatever number that is, if if we've got if we get a rough year, then our premiums are going to skyrocket, regardless of what other what other communities do. We're going to be on the higher end. We're on the, the higher end. end. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. right. 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 I mean, and, and that can be one person. They do have so so they do have <coughs> claims. I guess they call it claims pooling at seventy five thousand dollars. Any amount over seventy five thousand dollars isn't isn't part of your loss history. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar claim, our losses it would just reflect seventy five thousand. Uh, so, so, so there is some large claim pooling that happens across. The trust does that too. It, I think it's there's like two hundred. Do Do we know what our claim history has been? We have not been able to get it because it's, they don't give we're, out we're told that it's not tracked for because and this small. Yeah, with this small. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm not convinced. I mean, you take a look at this, uh, and again, this is none of this is in our control, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> it's not what I'm sorry. It's not in our control. The, I mean, the the plans are the plans. Plan. Yeah. As far as what the the premiums know. And yes, first, we'll yes and no. The the trust it's not in our control. Maya will tailor. You can make changes to yeah. your Maya plan at, at renewal. Increasing deductibles or, or whatever it is to, yeah. to reflect what, what your population looks like. Yeah. Yeah. If we were to switch to Maya, how long do we have to stay with them? Is there a required, like a commitment period? And, you know, like going in and out of plans. I mean, I, I can sort of see this, I could really see at this point going either way, because there are some advantages of the insurance trust. The disadvantage being, oh, it's right in the middle of a contract and we can't change a contract, so we have to invoke Massachusetts law and renegotiate in the middle, and nobody really wants to do that. But if you switch to Maya, I think you've pointed out that there's some disadvantages there, potentially longer term. So we, we definitely, we save short term, but that's not always the right decision, right? Uh, to go. So, what are things that might mitigate those longer term problems? You know, we get to a year where we're in year three, and finally, maybe our claims history, you know, makes it so one year we have an 11% increase, which everybody's going to have, we're going to have trouble with meeting that, right. say. Um, what, at, at that point, well, we could go out and look again, I suppose. Um, but that's probably not. A sustainable solution, is it? We don't. Well, maybe it is. Maybe that's what you've got to do. In the, right. the climate we have now is that every time it looks like you're facing 11 percent increase or 9 percent increase or whatever it is, you go out and look at what other options are there, and it's hard to predict what other options would be there, uh, if any, and all, they're all facing the same kind of problems, so they're likely to. I mean, I'm, I'm very surprised that Maya is so much lower. Well, or, but we don't know that they that others would be facing the same problems because we may have uh, a year or two year period of time that is way outside the norm because we have higher than, than, than average retired yeah. people on our, and, and that is going to be more money. Or we may have people who, who come to work with pre-existing conditions or what have you, and, and they, should get, they should absolutely get covered, but it's going to drive the premium that we get charged. So other right. towns may, it, it's rolling the dice. Yep, it is. It's definitely. <clears throat> and, and the 11% is not just on us. It's, you know, it would be right. hard for the employees to swallow as well. Exactly. Because some people are, like uh, retirees are paying 50%. You know, it's a little bit better for uh, 
employees who are either 70 or 75. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know what those guys think. But at that, at that point, the, if it is 11% after, what, three years, we got to opt out and, and look for another plan, right? Why not commit it? So to answer your question, and I, I will double check this, my understanding is that is that we're not signing for a term of years with Pio. Uh -huh. um, in terms of leaving the, in terms of if we were to terminate our membership with the trust, there's a provision in the agreement that says we're not eligible to reapply for two years. And they're, they are so under they're no obligation for two years. And they are under no obligation to vote us back in. What about the state plan? How the state that? plan is, I don't know if you've followed the news lately, it's kind of a disaster right now. Okay, you. Um, see a disaster recorder article. Yes. Um, they don't know what plans they're offering and they don't know what their current rates are. I don't well, think we should go with them. <laughs> I've made some decisions um, to eliminate some of the plan providers. Oh, um, that's, yeah, that's what the article was yeah. about, wasn't it? Yeah. But they didn't go through the proper channels, I guess, to do that. So. Okay, let's hear what uh, yeah. people yeah. here have to say. Uh, employees, I guess, that are here. Any comments <laughs> one way or another? Or? <laughs> <coughs> From what I've seen, in my opinion, um, I'm a little more skeptical that Maya will, will see a la larger increases with Maya. Maybe we'll have a cough savings in, in initially, but I'd, I'd be inclined to think that with that range that Maya was offering, we're a very small group. One, it doesn't take much to throw a skew way up and we'd be looking at major increases in the within a couple of years so yep. my, my suggestion would be to swallow the, the changes that the Hampshire Trust made and stay with them that would be my opinion what do you think I kind of agree with Keith too I mean it hurts and, and it's gonna hurt as an employee as well you know with the increases and stuff but again, if we change, they don't necessarily have to take you back, even if you want to, in two years. And then what kind of changes are made? And then, like I said, I'm sorry, no one knows. Any of us can be sick tomorrow, next week, something terminal, terrible, and you just don't know. Yeah, I, I hear that. You three? You don't have to say No, I'm still reading. <laughs> I, I, from a historical standpoint, from when I dealt with my for our property insurance and stuff, I would always go out to bid, and all of a sudden the rates would go down, and then they just, when I didn't go out to bid, the rates just kept sneaking up. And it makes me a little uncomfortable that they're, the plan is our existing plan, but it's costing less. I, I almost get that feeling of a, they're luring us in. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Hampshire Trust has, has yeah. always tried. We have a say with the Hampshire Trust because I'm the representative. So when we go to meetings, we have actual input. With Maya, we won't have a representative um, that will make those decisions. It will be administration that makes those decisions. Um, the trust has been good to us over the years. Uh, they did, um, in retrospect, they probably shouldn't have given those three years worth of zero percent increases. It was nice at the time, but um, it did use up a lot of the a lot. They wanted to use up some of their reserves because they did have too much for reserves. They wanted to use up some, so that's why in the beginning they used the zero, and then they said, well, let's do it one more year of zero, and that's kind of what pushed them over. That in the pharmacy portion of the costs, um, that is what's driving all, all of the insurance premiums is pharmacy-related costs. Um, I, I, you know, it's kind of like stay with the devil you know rather than the one you don't. I don't know. <laughs> if you look at it, the, the, the differences in premiums, <coughs> this one table, monthly ones, you're comparing the, the 
the trust, 18 versus the trust in 19, and you can see it's not the, it's not the last column because that's a different comparison, but you have to look yourself. 40 only single is going to go up roughly, say, $30, and you've got about three subscribers on that. 40 plus one is going to go up roughly, say, $70. You've got eight subscribers on that. And the family is going to go up uh, about $70. We have 14 subscribers on that, right? Uh, and that, but if you if you compare the the other thing to compare maybe is, is this a valid comparison? If you look at the the trust or the total on it, this larger page, the bottom line is 543,905. Is that is it safe to compare that to this other on page two? Your uh, 566, does that mean if the total premiums are going to go down? Is that a safe comparison or am I looking at it wrong? Brian? You are looking at total premiums paid for well, Hampshire, that's eight, that's FY18. Eight. I, I think you're looking at it right if the premiums do go down in year one from what we're currently paying. So from 566 it's going to go down so to the five. Well, now you gotta look at the trust for I think you're for 19, right. 566. Okay, that's what you have there. Okay. And for 18 we it's at 543, so they're going up. Yep. Yeah. Going up, yeah. Yeah, they're going up on average one one and a half percent. Okay. And eighteen and nine. As I read the plan, the the, the way the trust is trying to keep their premiums as low as possible is to add deductibles and co-pays, et cetera, at some level. Yep. yep. And, and I guess I, I'm going to pick on you guys, because the dog in the fight for me is the town, but the, you guys have dual dogs, something like that. Um, what do you guys like? <laughs> if you had your choice, would you rather pay more co-pays and deductibles or a higher, higher premium? I mean, what's your what's your risk? Depends on how you how you're presently using it. I get that. That's my and point. Again, you can roll the dice on that. that. Right. That's so I'm just wondering what's your what's your risk level? And it would be substantial for me. Okay, in terms of paying more in co-pays. So it would be substantial, right? Right. Right. That would add up fast. Yes. Although there is a cap, isn't there, on the co-pays and deductibles? You reach a limit. It was maximum out of pocket cost. Maximum out of pocket, but, but it's not broken down by by copays, deductibles, and and inpatient because a lot of those programs just usually are. Well, there's two members just out of pocket period. Yeah. And there's me a member versus family, right. not yeah. type right. of expense. The, the Maya, if you look at the front page, the Maya out of pocket is significantly lower. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But the, the big difference on the first page, if you look at it for co-pays, is the uh, inpatient hospital co-pay is 500, and the other outpatient surgical co-pay is 250. So you know, if you have an emergency, need stitches, you're going to pay, I guess, uh, outpatient surgery 250, right? If you go into the emergency room, if you go into the emergency room, right? Yeah. Well, that would be 100. Emergency rooms are Well, okay, emergency room, okay, 100. Okay. If they, if they outpatient should, surgery is your surgical daycare yeah. stuff where you're okay. in. Okay. So, I'm, I'm, not that it's 100% weight, but what you guys say does factor in. Mary Ellen, it sounds like, you, from a purely personal perspective, the Maya plan is much more favorable for your situation. I mean, I'm on the fence because I do understand costs are going up, you know, in that, but in terms of, yeah. The immediate. The immediate. Maya would be a better plan for me. But, I, but, but again, I understand all the other issues, too. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Right. What, what's it going to look like in five years? Right. 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 I mean, the big picture, we're probably talking about pers saving a couple percents each year. I mean, the trend for healthcare costs are. Right. So whether we're like this or we're like this, yeah, well, there solutions that need to happen difference. on a much larger scale. Yeah, yeah. for sure. The other thing that kind of complicates it is we actually have to set aside some money for claims. Right. Um, so, and I, 
did you end up finding out how much we I did. Um, I emailed Joe, and he was hesitant to give a number, uh -huh. as you might suspect. Um, he said that they would look at the past, I think, three months and three months of claims, and that's the amount we would set aside. But obviously, we're obligated to pay any claims that haven't been processed yet. Right. Our, our, our member Yavis would be an estimate. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing that might be an additional cost, if you went to Maya, would be you've got to also do the dental plans. Now, is that cost all separate from these numbers in both cases? Dental plans would be separate. Okay. Our, our so separate it's not that this is really in addition to this cost, and this already includes dental. It's those are it's a different it's a different dental plan. Yeah, dental um, through the trust. They usually contract for three years, uh -huh. so the rates remain steady for three years. Um, and I think we're, I don't know if this is the second or the third year of that three years, so the dental claims aren't going up that much. So, I mean, they haven't gone up that much. Even when we changed the contract, yeah. I, don't, I think it was pennies that it went up. Um, but there, it is calculated all separately. But we would, I, we can't keep dental if we don't have um, health insurance with the trust. Yeah. And so we, don't we know have to there's go move our dental over yeah. to. And we don't really have numbers for that, whether um, my it would be higher or lower on dental insurance. Or we do. We, we did get some figures on that. Hey, Brian, I don't know how to ask this without looking like a jerk, so I'll just ask it. Hey. What is the percentage of people in our group currently that are retired? Of subscribers. Of our oh, subscribers. Oh, there's a large number. Is that on the sheet? I think you got Where? Retirees. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Nine of column. So nine of. Well, the medics, no, there's 14 if you add them all. 25. Oh. 25 active and 14. So, a so, little more than a third. Right. So, I, I don't know whether this is an easy number to find out, but is that a roughly similar ratio than what exists in larger groups? I mean, just because demographics are what they are? Yeah. Because I, I do worry that if 33% of our population are looking at an age that healthcare costs, prescription medication, really does skyrocket. <clears throat> um, that we're looking at. We're, uh, that's a risk. That's that a risk that, 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 that we're going to be on the higher side of that of that average if on a regular basis. Yeah, if we're being compared to Boston, I don't know for municipalities in Boston if the demographics of people who work there are that much better than ours. I don't know. There's no way of knowing. Yeah. I mean, we we are an, a, a, a higher aged population out in Western Massachusetts <laughs> than Eastern Massachusetts, certainly. For the whole population, right. for people working for oh, no, a municipality, right. it's less clear to me that right. that demographic is just a lot different. But it might be. But it's a risk. We don't know. It's not going to be higher in other parts of the state, certainly. It probably won't be higher. might not be as much lower as the general population. Maybe not. You know, who knows? And that that's something that, that my retiree base will probably be growing for the town of Whaley. It will be. Based on, if you look at the average ages of our town. Are you announcing something like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope not. No, no. But if you look, I yeah, guess I being it. realistic, if yeah. you look at the average age of our employees, um, it's, um, it, if someone is eligible for Medicare, they have to go on Medicare. Um, the ones that might not be eligible for Medicare are those teachers who have been in the teach, teaching world since they got out of college. They've never put into Social Security, so they don't have enough quarters to go on Medicare. Those are the ones that we end up, that's some of these um, retirees that are under our HMO. They were never eligible 
to right. go on Medicare. So, or they're too young. They're in that in between stage. They haven't hit 65 they're, they're yet. 59. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they retired at 59, and we got to carry them on our our right. insurance. But they're paying 50 percent. Right, but, but, but again, that's why that's why this is best for not just the town, but it's also for the employees. I mean, it's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I almost. It's, to me, the most horrible part of this will be uh, if we were to stick with the trust. What do we have to do because of our union contracts? Is that even going to be possible to get done before town meeting? Is the outcome inevitable so that we could actually budget for it and just make sure we make the deadline by July 1st? That's really the deadline. I mean, is that even possible now that it's January 31st? It is possible. Or you're to, saying to, that's a good question. To, 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 look into it. to go through the Chapter 32B process that we're required to do? Yeah. Yes. It is possible. It is possible. Yeah. And how long does that take? I think it would be around two months. Which, if we started tomorrow, means the end of March, right. which is in time for town meeting. And it gives a month. And it gives, yeah, a few weeks before town So whatever we, because that's when we're planning the budget. Right. And is is the outcome of that inevitable? Like if we say we have to change and we're making this decision, is there something in that process where uh, you know where we're going to have to negotiate something that we can't you know, put our fingers on right now? So once once we figure out where we're headed. The 32B process says that the town needs to share 25% of the savings with subscribers. Individual but, checks to each okay. subscriber. Okay, uh, 25% so, of the total savings. Right. But if there's no savings, see, so, I thought you wrote the margin. 25% of zero yeah, so, <laughs> is zero. I, I, had a, I had a conversation with our, our town council this afternoon yeah. about how savings is calculated. So. Yeah. If we were to stay with with the Hampshire Trust, savings would be calculated by the difference between <clears throat> the FY19 plan with changes, so the, the total premium cost uh -huh. with changes uh, compared to without changes. So without changes, um, there was a nine point something percent. So why we don't act we don't actually see savings? We say we're sharing in the less of the increase. <laughs> That's like Washington D.C. budget. <laughs> you know, does that mean, so does that, mean that we will be? Even though not actually available, even though it's not it's actual not, savings, it's not something that we can actually offer. No, it sounds it's to me, Joyce. It's not something we I, can even decide. We can't even opt for that. Joyce, it sounds to me like we would be writing, indi and I could be wrong. We would be writing individual checks to people based upon the saving, the the, the savings of. Not cash, but money not spent. Balance sheet savings. Yes, yes. yes. money not spent. So it would be cash out. It would be a net deficit for so the. So it's like another cost to staying with the Hampshire Trust is that this change triggers this twenty-five percent. So so if, even if they've cut the increase from nine percent down to four and a half percent of that four, we're going to have to pay an additional one. One point something percent to for the unionized one. employees in your. Anyway, I believe it's all subscribers. All subscribers. Okay. Right, but it's but it's the pot divided by all subscribers. Yeah, isn't it the same with? So. My, oh yeah. If we, we, it's the same with if we go with Maya, we still have to pay because there's a savings involved with going with Maya. So if we do still have to negotiate with Maya, even though, according to what Brian found out today, even we still have to negotiate with the union, even though the plan is not changing, but the company is changing, you still have to go through the negotiation process. I was in our paying for council this afternoon. Right. So, so okay. either way, so there's a larger savings. Right, so it's a with larger. Maya. So we would pay more. Yeah. So we would pay more to two. And we're still not getting cash out of the savings. And still not. 
Does that hurt your mind? It hurts my brain. It just, it I gotta tell you, that's a great lobby someone has. <laughs> We ended up doing that in negotiations where we changed the rates, the um, percentage rates. Right. We ended up having to negotiate that all those people who were on the policy would get, I think with the, it started at like $200 the first year, $100 the second year, and $50 or something over a three year span of the, the contract that we would, so that was our negotiation in order to lower the percent from 80 right. to 75. Yeah. For 85 to right. 75 or whatever it was, so we've done it. it we have done that in the past. So. Yeah. And so, is the back end also Blue Cross, or like you're saying, Answer Trust does it, and then the actual work is done by Blue Cross? It's exact same plan. Yeah. Exact same. Okay. Brian, when do we have to have a decision on this? Um, so soon. Yesterday. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, um, town meetings piece of a factor of the you know, would, it, would, it, would it help to uh, survey all the 25 employees and see what what their preference was and not that we're committed to, to that decision but at least give us inform more better information to decide I mean could you send something out or send what you have developed so far and see what response you get if, if they don't care well they don't respond if you get 10 responding what do the 10 want to What's their preference? Not, not that we're bound by that, but just to give us more information. It cuts both ways doing that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Our next meeting is until the 14th. So that puts the process off to it's ending about a week before town meeting. When is town meeting this year? Has it been scheduled? 24th. 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 So well, it depends on if you wanted to for the next meeting. How much time you want to give them? Our next meeting is February. Well, I mean, technically, we have a meeting on the 6th with the, with the uh, we have a meeting on next Tuesday with the Finance Committee, don't we? No. Yes, we do, yeah. Finance the 6th. Yeah. We have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee, and if it's posted, and we put up an agenda, which there might be enough time to do. I, but I, I can't see putting the decision off any later than that. Well, I'm not sure you get, I'm not sure you, I'm not sure you get a, a, a I don't think we get a benefit out of it. And I'm not sure you get the, the number of results that you're looking for in the, in, in less than a week time frame. Yeah. Well, you're talking two, two weeks. Well, if you wait no, till the next if meeting. it was the 6th. Yeah, if you wait till the next meeting is the 14th. Select board yeah, meeting. That's tough. But I just don't feel them tick tock, tick tock. That third, you know, two months process, I could easily see a delay. Oh, it's school vacation. Oh, it's. Oh, it's the week before. Right? So yeah, I, I got to tell you, I, I, I'll just speak for myself and I, I'll throw it out there that I don't like playing darts with employees paychecks in terms of I don't know where the darts gonna go in three years I, yeah. I think it's I mean it's I feel more comfortable swallowing whatever pill we have to swallow right now and that at least people can plan rather than wondering what it's gonna look like in three years and not being able to opt out because we don't have any other options to go to in three years. I, I just don't, I don't think it's fair to anyone to make a decision based upon a com relatively complete unknown in, in three years, two, three years. I, I just, I just struggle with that. I mean, these guys have to plan. Retirees have to plan. But if, if at least if you stay with a trust next year, this time you could decide again, right? Sure. Whether if you switch to Maya, you're committed to kind of for three years. So you don't have any other options. You're, no, you're, you're, you're somewhat committed is probably the right word. You can't go back to the Hampshire Trust for two years minimum. If in two years you want to go back, they could take you. If they allow right. it, yeah. They might not. Yeah. Well, and, and part of that might be if they have a bean in their bonnet. Yeah. They might, they might be pissed off because it's just... happen in local politics. <laughs> 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 right. And... Uh, I, I just feel badly for the people who have issues going on right now. Right. But they, they may also have issues going on yeah. in three years. Yeah. yeah. And then it might be different people. It could be the same right. people. Right. You know? New people. Who knows? Who, 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 right. I, I just, that's my, my gut that Lynn said, you, know, you, you dance with the devil you know. So are we ready to decide today? Or? I, I didn't say that. I just pointed <laughs> <my opinion. Yeah. laughs> 
I feel badly for people. I just it stinks. Yeah. yeah. But it's not a, it's not anything that the rest of the world doesn't deal with too with their healthcare premiums. I mean, it just. What are we going to know anymore if we wait till another week or two weeks? Are we going to know any more information? Yeah, by what Tuesday, well, but potentially by Tuesday, we have a little more feedback from employees about what they think. We've got uh, three employees who are kind of devil you know, and one employee who's on the fence and <laughs> appreciates both sides of the argument. It may be that we're in that same position. Well, how many more? And, and, no, actually, uh, Jim hasn't, hasn't uh, chimed in, but he finished reading. He finished reading. Finish reading. I didn't and, finish reading. I'm still so oh, confused. Okay, so two on the fence. <laughs> and we haven't heard from Jen. And we haven't heard from Jenny yet. We haven't heard from Brian. Uh, and John. They, they, I don't know if they want to make the, you know, to, to say. I want to acknowledge you, John, that's all. I don't take out the chairs. I just don't know whether people yeah. are going to be able to have time to respond. Then we have to, then we have to sift and, through all the data. Yeah, yeah. do that and, again. And, uh, and you know, there's a reason why they voted for three people to make right. decisions. Right, this that isn't California in proposition land. Right. They were well, all, everybody was notified to be here tonight, too. Sorry. Yeah. Well, let, let me just, before we go down the road, Jim, do you have anything to say? Um, it, it makes sense to me. I mean, I kind of agree with what they're saying and just stick with what we've known, even though it's going to, you know, the costs seem to be going up and from our perspective. It, it is scary to, to think what it's going to be in three years from now. Yeah. And what's to say that all that, that's not going to change. They're, they're going to add co-pays and they're going to add all that other stuff in addition to you know, Boston deciding the, the percentage that we're going to go up and not having a say. I think having a say, having a representative that goes to the trust meetings and voices you know, the concerns of Waitley, I think, I think that's a big thing. Nobody's going to listen to us at least. Unless you can figure out how to get them to Maya board. Well, well with Maya, we can, we, can, we can define whatever the plan benefits are. So with, with Maya, at any time with renewal, if we wanted to impose a $20 copay for PCP, we could. Um, so we probably, have more fle we probably have more flexibility with Maya in terms of defining what the plan benefits are. But whatever our choices are, affect the premium, you know, affect the, the rate increases. So I call them adjustments, but there have been increases for. Is there any way to stick with the trust this year and then tackle the different options we would have with Maya starting sooner rather than later in terms of, okay, if we increase copays by 20, I mean, sort of play the game you just played. And, and, and have like a variety of options to see which one we want to ultimately go with, but we have time to digest it all. You're, you've got so many variables, you, you, could, you could play all year with, could. With, with all the I different totally variables and still I not totally decide which is the best. We won't know. But we won't know. We won't know rates at that point. We didn't know rates until end of January. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. it's the end of January right now. Yeah, we still don't know the GIs. I think we could, we could predict that Maya would have that low, low, low introductory rate, right? And no matter whether if you were to ask them this year or next year or the next year, it's always it seems like structurally they're set up that you get your your low, low introductory rate, and then your balloon payment comes in three years, right? Um, it's like like one of those adjustable rate mortgages, right? And, and we see that cost. Uh, a lot of problems. Wouldn't, wouldn't in my ass history know the situation we have with Hampshire Trust and say they, they can't go back? Wouldn't they know that? They're going to know that next year. They, we can't automatically go back. I would hope they wouldn't do that, seeing as how they well, are. If they have time to look at all of They are mass municipal associations. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know, but. But I get it. Yeah. They're a business. Okay, John, do you have anything you wanted to say? No, he already bowed out. He already bowed out. And uh, the other young lady here. No, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah you're with the school? Or? Yeah. Okay. And Jenny, you got nothing. I think I'm sort of Mary Ellen and getting to that near retiree sort of age. So, yeah, increased co pays are a little scary. I had some surgeries I'm going to try right. to before July 1st. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, um, I don't have to pay that extra, but you know, that's something serious. 
easy staying with what you know. Makes sense. So I think we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna get anything for free. So. Okay. So are, are let me ask again. Are we ready to make a decision today, the board here, or we want to, or do we want to postpone for two weeks and? Go through the same thing again. I, I don't want to post it for two weeks. That, no. that, that's going to be too tight to get done. What, okay. what we would need to, no matter what our decision tonight is, we are going to have to go through the chapter 32 of that sort of member process. Um, so we should just. So the, the what happens on town, on town meeting floor? Anything? Um, for this? Yeah. Well, budget gets approved. I think. Right, but but they, but could you get people trying to amend our decision on town meeting floor in terms of the amount of money you budget for health care costs? No, in terms of people who perhaps aren't here tonight coming to town meeting and saying that this is a raw deal for us as employees of the or retirees of the, of the town. Only the town, only town residents would be able to do that. So it would have to be, you know, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So town yeah. residents. Yeah. Would, and I don't know that it would be within oh. the scope of any or, 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 or we or certainly are not going to exclude the union rep from town meeting. Can I ask one more? Yeah, question? but they can't propose changes. But like, they can voice. They can voice their opinion. Right. But they can't. Right. They can't. Not the yes. And I just they feel badly they're not here. But so to Keith's point, yeah. everyone knew. So, so whatever our decision is, if we go to this process, is the outcome basically inevitable, I guess? I know we may have, we'll have to pay 25% of the savings, but that's, that's inevitable. But is there, is there like any way that this process goes where somebody comes back and says, no, you have to make the other decision, or no, we don't accept this? The, the point, the purpose of the 32B process is mitigation. Oh, so they could ask for more than, no, than what we have to. It, it's really as to how it's, it, it's really meant for mitigation. Okay. Um, the reason the process was set up is because you have a collectively bargained right and there's yeah. no, there's no, there was no mechanism to reopen that contract without the agreement of both parties. So there was, sort of the state law this mechanism right. as to which would essentially okay. force a negotiation between those two parties right. okay but the outcome of the negotiation it's pretty is it's pretty pretty sad. inevitable but there's it is a negotiation so there may be more things I, I think there's asked for on the table I think there's different ways to distribute the 25 percent in uh, savings right yeah, yeah, certain, yeah. Um, okay. certain Types of accounts, or I don't think it necessarily has to be a check to the okay. check to everybody. Okay. All right, but it's more. It's I'd say more or less inevitable the outcome of that process, and there's not some way for it to get like pop into a black hole somewhere. In, in terms of timing, the state law says we need to we need to have finished that process 60 days before the effective date of the plan changes. So we would have until April 30th <laughs> to finish that process, but we need to we need to know amounts, and we, we will have a pretty good idea of what amounts we will need. Really, once we make the decision, we'll have a pretty good idea of what the amounts that, that will be. Can, can I ask one other question? And Mary Ellen, you can tell me if you don't want me to use you as... I'm just looking at the current the, the the trust current versus the the trust approved and because people like Mary Ellen are the ones most impacted by staying with the trust because of the uh, of the co-pays etc the, the maximum stays the same but I guess I'm wondering let's assume that you don't have to go to the emergency room so that that increase of $25 doesn't matter Inpatient admissions would go from zero to 500. Surgical daycare goes from zero to 250. NMRI, et cetera, et cetera, goes from zero to 100. And then the specialist office visits goes from, let's say, 15 or 20 to 40. 
if you could forecast, what, is it, what, what does that mean to you? Because some of them won't impact you and some of them will. But potentially it's a few thousand more per I year. Would more. I'm sorry? I would definitely be paying more. Because it will impact you at some level. Right. No question. Right. Because mostly because, because of specialist uh, care. Right. right. So you're, it's going to be an extra $20 every visit at the minimum. Right. So 10 visits, so you're 20 bucks. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And that's not just a snapshot, that's forever. Okay. No, no I, I, I. It just stinks. It just okay. We have a motion. <coughs> I reluctantly move that we <laughs> stick with the Hampshire Trust for the coming year okay, I'll and second. keep on checking things out as we go uh, for coming years. Okay, I'll second that motion. That motion. Any further discussion before we go? No, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Right. We'll start the process tomorrow, right? Yeah, this time. You already started? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, moving on the agenda. Uh, uh, thanks, you guys, for thank coming, you by so the much way. For coming. This, is, this was book. really, really hard, and I really appreciate your honest opinions. That was, that was really hard. Okay, next on the agenda is... Uh, Appointment with the Whaley Firefighters Association on the proceeds of the safe trailer disposition. Is that John or Keith? Or? So, John, can you come up because your voice is a little bit soft? Could you come sit up in the front? Excuse me? Please? What, what'd you say? I couldn't hear you. My voice is soft. I couldn't hear you earlier. I didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> he shook his head. He's get motions. Yeah. And people will not get motion sickness when they turn the camera. So much fewer turning of the campus. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming up front. No, no, you, 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 you want me to provide an introduction? We, we uh, wish she was quieter. But I read days. what you put in the email. Yeah. But uh, maybe we could repeat that for the home audience. So my. Want me to do it? Go ahead. You fill in the blanks. All right. Okay. The fire department had a safe trailer, 2001 safe trailer, if I remember correctly. Correct. And that was purchased with grant funds. And that was a county-wide fire education safety asset. asset that was shared throughout the county. Um, and they acquired a new one, and they, um, they were going to dispose of the old one. And at a prior select board meeting, this board decided to donate the safe trailer to the um, Firefighters Association, and it was approved at, I believe don donations were approved at town meeting, it was approved at town meeting. Um, and the idea was, is that the Whaley Firefighters Association would um, recoup $2,000 that was spent for something I can't recall. So the, the $2,000 covered the balance of what was due on the new safe trailer. Oh, okay. um, that was the. What was it? The, it was a. Uh, oh, cover was the cost. Ended, to cover the cost, it ended up costing two thousand dollars more than what the grant allowed for. So there was a balance outstanding. The Whaley Firefighter Association um, took the initiative to, to cover that balance, just so we could take possession of it and, and finish the transaction with the company. Um, so the the Whaley Firefighter Association was looking to recoup that two thousand dollar. Um, investment um, initially. Um, can I just finish up? Finish up. Oh, so, please. so to uh, we took possession of the new trailer. Um, it's been uh, working out really well uh, for Franklin County <coughs> Towns. Uh, fire safety education was at the, the uh, Conway 250. It's gone to a lot of other schools and uh, departments. Um, in the meantime, we're tasked with trying to get rid of uh, the other trailer. It's a big trailer. It's really a specialized piece of equipment. There's a really small market for it. We tried uh, peddling it to some other uh, departments who had expressed some interest, and it really just didn't end up working out. So we sold it on Municipal, and the winning bid was uh, 
Keith helped do that. That was uh, $4,100. Um, so what we, what we would like to do as the fire department, the fire association is not only recoup the $2,000, but also that other $2,100 and put it towards additional fire department assets just to keep it in, in the department, serving the uh, community. Are you proposing to recoup it out? Well, did I miss something? Yeah, there's, a, there's an agreement that, that they, that what was, what would have originally happened with the $4,100? We're gonna recoup uh, our $2,000 that we invested initially in, in the new trailer to cover the, the, uh, the balance of what was due on the new trailer. We got more for the trailer than that. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, I mean, it, it's found money for yeah. for the town. What we would like to do is just keep that money in the fire department um, and use it towards uh, other assets. Um, particularly, one, one of the things that we're looking at is um, you want to go into that too, or go ahead. You're doing good. You're You're doing doing good. So one of the other things that we're one of the other things well. Uh -huh. We're looking at a, a manned vehicle, so this could be. Uh, you know, a nest egg for something like that. Um, whatever, whatever it gets used for, it's definitely going to be used for a fire department uh, asset. You know, to, and, and it's going to be um, staying in our community. You know. I'll make a motion to what I wrote. Whatever he said. Give the twenty-one hundred to the firefighters yeah. association. So, yeah. Yeah, allow, so, they, yeah. allow them to keep the. To yeah. Keep the mm -hmm. full right. You guys wrote the grant originally to get it. Yes. Okay. So okay. we were just kind of like lucky because it went through our doors. This this said it was going to be split. That you're going to split the difference. Yeah. Really. So now you're asking us for hundred percent of those. That's right? correct. Okay. Okay. I'll second the motion. Do we? We have a vote. I think All so. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Easy come, easy go, right? All right. Okay. Okay. It's a win-win. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Moving on, the next appointment is uh, Chief Sabine and uh, Police Department update. Do you want me to move over to the... Yeah, could you? <laughs> <laughs> we, warmed we, warmed the the we warmed them up for you. <laughs> <laughs> you kept it warm. Okay, so I will go as quickly as you want me to go, but I've got a, a few things on my list as far as uh, just giving a general update as to what's going on in the police department, uh, what we've been doing, what I would like to plan to do. Uh, so just starting off, the big topic is the community outreach or community activities. Uh, the last two quarters, I came in and we discussed a Citizen Police Academy and a ride-along program. Those are the two things that were approved as far as the, the quarterly community outreach programs. Um, the Citizen Police Academy didn't work out as planned. Uh, we didn't get, we got two people to sign up for it, so it just didn't uh, make physical sense to, uh -huh. to go forward with this. It was gonna be a seven, seven week long program involving a lot of police officers on the department. <clears throat> and doing education and all that stuff. So um, we canceled it and I proposed to those two individuals, which they they accepted my proposal, but they haven't uh, made plans yet to come in and have kind of their own private um, tour of the station, maybe do a ride along, give them not, not the full seven week course, but just maybe spend a couple hours with them, give them a tour of the station, show them the equipment, things that we would do normally, okay. uh, but it would, be, it would have been spread out over a longer period of time and uh, give them the option to, to come to a ride along if they wanted to. They, they thought it was a great idea. Um, they appreciated the offer. And they just haven't, uh, with holidays and everything coming up, yeah. they haven't been able to schedule it yet. So that's probably gonna, gonna be happening with that. Um, the ride along program is a little bit more successful. I think that's gonna continue to grow. That's something I'd like to continue on with, um, not just as a quarterly thing, I'd like to continue moving forward with that because I know there's there's a, a number of people that have expressed interest. I've probably got a dozen people that have expressed interest in it. They just haven't, again, with the holidays, they haven't come forward and, and scheduled the time. We probably had a half a dozen people already do it, um, go through the ride along program. So um, that that seems to be more popular, more have you popular. Have right? from them? Um, 
just general conversation. We don't have a, a form that, that gives. No, I know. Right. I'm just saying, anecdotal yeah, feedback. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the, the general feedback is, um, I guess, the the common theme is not realizing um, everything that we do throughout a shift. That stuff that's not, you know, it's not a. I don't want to call it a big ticket item, but it's not something where we'd necessarily be doing a report. But the things that we do, stopping and talking to people. The business checks and all the other small things that we do that that um, it isn't broadcast out there it isn't put out there so people don't didn't really realize that we did as much as um, yeah. they would have thought I mean people just think we answer 911 calls and we stop cars but there's so much more to it um, than just that so that was that was kind of the big thing I mean it, we've had people that want to come back and do it again so How long the program right? was it? <laughs> it's just it's, um, I think I think if they all did a complete shift or so it's usually one one shift an eight hour shift or they get what's convenient to them if they want to stay out for a couple hours or if they want to stay out for four hours but I'm pretty sure everybody did a, a full shift um, about how many have happened already about six about yeah. six and about uh, you said 12 earlier so about six more are probably going to happen no that's in addition to what what's already there i mean i get a lot of people that tell me they want to do it but <clears throat> they haven't they haven't you know, come in and oh, okay. fill out the application oh, okay. to sign up and, and actually schedule to okay. do it so six have happened and there maybe there's at least an the potential interest for, if all those people got back to you potential for a dozen more. six more <clears throat> well, a dozen more a dozen more yeah oh, okay okay yeah Obviously. and i can see that as as word gets around as you know people talk about it i can see that I'm hoping that it, that it grows. Can we get the names of the people who did it? Because it might be a cool scoop mark. I, oh, yeah, sort of I, an interview. I, I'd be reluctant to. Why? It's public record, isn't it? Yeah. Well, or it's not you, public record well, as far as who. You could be writing an article for the scoop. You could put in a few quotes on that, like from, as you know, the people, and you might be able to get them to give a anonymous quote. Yeah, I, I could. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put somebody out there to say, yeah, oh, this person no, did a ride along. Be anonymous. And, but but if they wanted to, give them the option. Why not? I mean, that's good PR. That's great yeah, PR. We could ask them if they wanted to say them. something or, or mind because they quoted in the school. Or they may be willing to write a paragraph. Or have give, a, long give a comment or something all, like that. Well, wait a second. But they all filled out an application. An application is part of the public record. The names are part of public record. I just think it would yeah. be very cool to get that PR bump. Right. Well, um, but but. Yeah, I, just, I think it would. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem. Whatever you think is the optional. Follow making it optional for them. I, I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to put somebody's name out there when they don't. Even though it's public record. Oh, I, I get that. But, but it, <laughs> if, like it if, if we could reach out to them and say, "Hey, will you do this?" Modify the form. In 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 public you publicly. I, I just yeah, think it would that's be. That's something. To I did. Yeah. yeah. Give that. And just can you say in general is it mostly say teenagers high school kids or old retired people or no what, I mean, kind of, we, what are you getting mixed or, or mostly one type or another i don't know how you could mostly know. men mostly, mostly women, women yeah. no it's 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 a mix, it's I mean, a mix. we've it's had um i'd say people 30s 40s in, in that age range um a lot of people that say they want to do it you know those are the the retired people that, you know, that I have one guy that says, you know, just pick me up on some Thursday and we'll, we'll go out. Yeah. Well, but you got to fill out some paperwork, you know. So yeah. um, that that might happen. But he's, he's retired. He's experienced by filling out the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've had men. We've had women. Oh. Okay. There, there is there is an interest. Um, I think for some people the interest might be just to get in the car and drive around on a cruiser. You know, that's. That's really it. Okay, I've, I've done that. And Take me the, home. And shoot the guns, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go shoot and play stuff. <laughs> Put the lights on, race around town. For the audience yeah. at home who might not be able to hear very well, Brian did not say anything about shooting <laughs> guns. <laughs> no shots Dunkin', were fired. Maybe okay. Dunkin' Donuts visit, right? <laughs> what else? Um, so those, that's kind of looking at what, what's already happened. Um, we... Just a couple other things that, that have been going on. There was a RAD Women's, RAD stands for Rape Aggression Defense. It was a self-defense class that was taught. It's kind of a joint effort between, excuse me, uh, it was done at Frontier. It was between um, 
Conway, Deerfield, Waitley, we all have um, instructors in the RAD program, so there was a, a class that was taught for women, high school girls, that um, it's kind of a, usually an annual thing. At one point they tried to make it part of the, the gym class, so they would do it every year. That, that kind of fell apart, but um, so that, that happened. Um, the school lockdown drills, that's, that's kind of picking up, picking up speed in, in the sense of it's, like for, for fire departments, they have four drills that are required per year. We've been doing school lockdown drills for probably nine, nine or 10 years, but it's now becoming more structured where we have different types of drills that we want to do. We, have, we usually start off the year with an unannounced drill, then we have an announced drill, and then we have what's called an organic drill where we just walk into the school, we hand a script to a teacher and say, read this. And basically what it says is, you know, there's a lockdown drill, announce it, yell it out into the hallway, kind of pass it along, and then we see how far around the school it gets. Um, so there's no announcement over the loudspeaker oh. or anything like that. So um, we've done it with kids at recess time, we've done it with kids at lunch time. What, what's been happening lately, the last couple of times we did it, is we've been able to schedule it as a district, a district-wide thing. So we go to Frontier, and then we go to each one of the elementary schools. So it's, it's done over the course of, usually we start early and we're done by one o'clock, but we get all the schools done. Um, and it's, it's very productive in the sense of, obviously the school safety and, and what they're getting out of it, but we also recognize a lot of things that that, that may be wrong. I mean, doors that may be broken, locks that may not work, intercoms that are broken. So we find a lot of these things, we're able to forward that on to the, you know, the facilities managers and get those things taken care of as a you know, public safety committee, as opposed to just a teacher telling the, you know, the right. custodian, hey, my speaker doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. You know, now it's, it's put out there at a meeting, you're on the spot, you gotta get this fixed because it's a safety issue. So there's a lot of other benefits that come from it as well. But that's gonna continue on. Um, we're actually looking at, because Deerfield has private schools as well in their community. Um, I know Deerfield yeah, is working with them to, to do drills. But we would probably participate in it. We're not gonna really be part of the, the planning or anything like that, but we'll participate in it because if something happens there, we're also gonna be going to those schools as well. So there'll probably be more, more drills done throughout the year. Um, we are, we're also doing tabletop exercises, just pick a, a random topic. Like last time was uh, missing student. And we had four different, four different scenarios. You know, kid out on the playground, teacher turns around, sees the kid running into the woods, you know, go in the woods to chase after him, what do you do? And then all the, the police, fire, EMS representatives, plus all the school representatives, we split up into groups and we kind of playing out a tabletop exercise as to how we, would, how we would handle it. So we've got different scenarios. We're gonna to continue to do that and, and progressively make it more and more difficult so we can prepare for the biggest worst case scenario that, that we could imagine. So that's what our hopes are anyway. So, so those, those lockdown drills in our school safety meetings, um, we, we used to do them once a month. We're doing them quarterly now. But those are, are very, very beneficial to all public safety and the schools. So it, it really works out well when we, when we have those meetings. Um, so moving on, senior triad meetings, been going to the, the triad meetings. We've been, we've, had, there's been some issues with trying to get meals on wheels out to some locations or um, people that they're, they, they may have moved or something like that. So we've kind of got put on the list as the police department where um, there's, some individuals that we may pick up the, the bag of food for them and bring it to their house. We've been doing some stuff like that for the seniors. Are you working, working with the outreach coordinator the seniors on that? Yes, yep. Yeah, we, we unfortunately we have um, some people where not necessarily on speed dial, but <coughs> we're um, definitely in constant communication trying to you know, get, get certain people help or get them some services for different things that may be going on with, with their lives, you know, right, trying to place them or trying to get, a, get them some help. Because the average coordinator was hired specifically to reach out to those people who are more challenging to to touch mm -hmm. and make sure that they're getting the, at the minimum, friendship that they need, as yeah. let, let alone medication, food. I mean, so 
that for, person should be your, your best friend. Yeah, so the last meeting we had, th this topic came up for discussion at the last meeting we had, and we have a list of triad members that um, the Sheriff's Department does triad visits. On that list, we probably have nine, nine or 10 um, seniors that are listed on that triad list. Um, so I talked to the, at our meeting, talked with the, the group and thought of, do they have a list of seniors that come and visit the senior center so we would have you know, a better idea of how many people you know, need services. So they, they have a list with a, a few more names on it. So I went and talked to Lynn and just said, anybody that's a senior over 60 years old, um, how many of those people do we have in Waitley? And it turns out we have around 500 um, seniors in the town of Waitley alone. But 60 is the, that's the cutoff, not 65? Nope, 60 is what, the, what they offer for services at the, at the seniors. Wait, did anybody talk to Marlene? As far as the, the list that, that they yeah, have? Because, because <clears throat> perhaps, and this isn't a slight on trial, they're not a great organization, but the senior center has a complete list because it, it's their, it's a, it's a grant funded initiative that they're doing to make sure that they know all the people that they need to have outreach to. Um, and, and I would encourage you to not just depend upon Triad, but go, no. to, we'll go to the senior center. Well, that's the whole, that was the whole point of, Triad only has nine people. Right. No, we have more than that. So going to Lynn and getting an, an actual list from the town clerk of how many, that's the most accurate figure that we have, but people over 60. We know that not, not all of those people need services, there's people that are 60, 65, 70 that, that still work, that you know, they, they don't have any issues. So what we're doing is taking that list and gonna be working with the senior center to identify people that, whether it's triad visiting, but I don't, I don't wanna depend solely on triad. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to start our own program where you know, we, we basically have the list and you know, when an officer's working a shift to make it a point to, to stop and visit at least one one senior during your shift, so we can we can try to get out there more to visit the seniors and identify those that might not know that the senior center is available and what services they offer. So we're and just trying to do it as a and I guess educational my point thing. Be, and that's great. My point would be make sure that you know what the average coordinator is doing. Yep. And what the average and the average coordinator yeah. knows what what you're doing, so that you're not duplicating efforts. And I, yep. I just I, I'm not getting the sense that that formal line of communication exists. It does, and that's what we discuss at the meeting. It does, yeah. With with Marlene, with, with the senior center director? Yes. Okay. Yeah. With our outreach coordinator, they, we talk about it. Okay. Our, you know, again, the list that, that they have might not be the, as extensive as our, as actual, our actual census list. And so we want to make sure, and that was kind of the first step, is identifying, saying, yeah, hey, we have 200 people are these, and then sitting down with the senior center, you know, are these people on your list? Okay. And kind of compare it. If not, let's add them and let's get over there and, and visit them. Um, so there's definitely more of a, an effort going into visiting the seniors and, and getting services. Right. Because especially in the winter, you know, we're already visiting, visiting people. And we haven't experienced as much of a, an issue as some of the other towns, but there's, you know, there's people that don't have fuel you walk in their house, it's freezing cold, and they can't afford the fuel, so they're just wrapped up in blankets, and keeping their doors and windows closed. Yeah, so they're, I mean, the senior center is great. I mean, they're looking at, they've got seniors that they're looking at replacing furnaces and trying to raise money to, you know, to, to do all kinds of things. So our yeah, senior center has been really, yeah. really, uh, really proactive in that sense. Um, we're we're kind of I'm working on something. It's not official yet, but I'm trying to. To help out in the sense where there's there's some seniors that can't make it to doctor's appointments and things like that so we're trying to um, track down some form of transportation so there's um, somebody in, in Waitley that has a small shuttle bus that I'm looking at seeing if we can somehow work out something where we can get some transportation because there's volunteers that would you know that we, we could whether it's training or whatever but volunteers that we get to that would take seniors to doctor's appointments or things like that and not rely <coughs> not rely solely on the the FRTA because you know they have a specific route and if you live five miles off that route they're not going to come pick you up at your house so um, 
and then we, we had one senior that spent six hours just to go to a doctor's appointment in Northampton. And just switching buses, waiting, waiting for the next bus. It was like a six hour day just to go to a doctor's appointment. So that's, that's unacceptable for our seniors. We're hopefully working towards uh, bettering that type of thing. So some of the, the new outreach things I'm looking at doing, I mean, as always, we've got um, firearms classes, CPR classes that we're kind of working on scheduling for the beginning part of 2018. We're looking at doing some of those classes because we have lists of people that are interested in doing that. I'd like to plan a meeting with the Grange as part of the, the seniors. And I know a lot of seniors are members of the Grange as well, but um, it gets, gets us the ability to sit directly and talk to Waitley residents and I specifically want to talk to them about identity theft and scams because it's, it's, a, it's a growing problem and it's just amazing how many times we tell people and, and they still answer the phone and fall for some of the scams and um, they, they have their identities compromised and they don't know what to do. So, so I'd, I'd like to, we, I've got materials, I've got things that I'd like to present to them so people would know. I mean, we have information available online, but a lot of seniors don't use computers, so. Do you think you'll have a date within the next couple of weeks? The scoop deadline is like the 21st-ish. I can, yeah, yeah. I can definitely get it. Because I think that would be board. of interest to more than just the range, and they, the, there's part of their meeting that's open, and I think that would mm -hmm. be the open part. That, yeah. That others might be interested in. Yeah. yeah, I can certainly, I can certainly get a date by. Yeah. Okay. okay good. At least get out to everybody. I'll send that reminder out tonight so people remember okay. that deadline is about three weeks away. That works. Yeah. Um, I was hoping that John or uh, JP would stick around because there's a uh, public safety day that hasn't really started yet, but it's coming in the spring. Is something we're going to do at the school. So it's going to be police, fire, EMS. We're going to be working on. Uh, kind of setting up a public safety day and bringing in as much cool stuff as we can to show the kids as far as, you know, equipment, we'll bring in fire trucks and we'll bring in cruisers and, you know, get a canine. I'm trying to get the helicopter, you know, we see whatever we can, whatever we can get that, you know, shows the, shows the kids because any piece of equipment like that that we have to show them it's in a positive note is, is a good thing. So, so um, we're working on planning that. So we don't have any dates or anything for that yet, but I know I got to meet with JP. He wants to have a meeting with me and and John just to kind of finalize dates and what we can get for for equipment. And it's not just going to be, like I said, it, hopefully it won't just be you know, Waitley showing up with one cruiser and a couple of fire trucks and the ambulance. You know, we want to have it a you know a big event for the kids, make it enjoyable. It'll be a whole whole day event. So so that's hopefully something that's going to be uh, moving forward. Um, home security assessments. We've, we've always done house checks where if you go on vacation, we can check your house. But in doing house checks and talking with people, we've, we've realized that a lot of people may not have security in mind when it comes to their house, whether they have you know, broken locks on their, on their windows or whether their, you know, their front door, the, the lock isn't isn't working right. They got the. I've seen doors on backwards where the hinges are on the outside. So I've seen all kinds of things when we're doing these house checks. So we've started. I've already put information out on our on our uh, town website where people can actually request a um, home security assessment. Where we come to your house, spend about an hour, half hour, an hour there, walk around the house, check the windows, check the doors. I'll give you a list of what improvements you could make. Um, it's, it's amazing the things that, that people don't know as far as security, some basic steps that you can take to, to really secure your house even more. Unfortunately, we've had a couple of um, houses get broken into. And I've talked with those people and they made all kinds of improvements to their house, uh, all the way up to security systems that they, you know, camera systems that they put in their house. So um, it was helpful you know, talking with those people under unfortunate circumstances. but. I'd like to catch people under fortunate circumstances where they haven't been victimized. We can try to prevent that before it gets to that point. So, 
So the home checks you've been doing up to now, you don't provide any feedback if there's things. We do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, but we usually what we get is um, somebody comes to the station and says, "Hey, I'm going to be gone next week." Yeah. With a form to fill out. You know, I know you've done it. Yeah. You fill out the form. But we don't actually go to your house beforehand and look around. You know, when we go to the house, we'll note things. Hey, your screens in the back or yeah. your hatchway was open or this was wrong or that was wrong you know we know that and we can you know provide that feedback to the to the homeowner do but we don't that. we do okay. yeah but we don't we don't do a you know an assessment ahead of time saying oh, okay. yeah. make sure that this is working that's working yeah. Yeah. so it is it is a big thing um, yeah. as far as home security i mean people are getting more and more more and more concerned about it we something as simple as locking your doors i mean i have plenty of people that tell me, why would I lock my doors? They're just going to break it anyways. So I don't want to replace a door. So I'll just leave it unlocked. So I mean, there's yeah. there's things. Well, you could you could put a better lock in. You could put a better door in. You yeah. something that they that it won't be able to kick in. So yeah, I, I can tell you. It took me three clicks to get to the contact the police department and uh, to the list where you can select. Uh, request a house check, request a security assessment, submit a general question or comment, receive information. It was really, really easy, and I'm not a millennial, but I found it. In <laughs> <place>. <laughs> and we, we do, that, that's used a lot, mostly for the house checks, um, but people do do use that. I, I quite frequently get <clears throat> people requesting house checks or providing information, or hey, you know, I've had people, I crashed my car yesterday, into a telephone pole, you know, what do I do? Uh, you yeah. should have called Ben and not yeah. sent me an email. <laughs> but, <clears throat> so it is It is being used, so that's a, that's a nice, nice feature that we have on our website. <clears throat> Some of the, the simple things, talking with the, uh, the principal at the elementary school, you know, we're always looking for things we can do at the school uh, with the kids. High five Fridays. High Five Friday is a good thing. I have on my list of, uh, I know I've talked with a couple other chiefs that have done it and they've got a lot of positive feedback, but lunch with the chief where you go in once a week and you actually sit with the kids and have lunch with them, talk to them. So it's not High Five Fridays, yeah, High Five as they walk by, but giving us the opportunity to sit down and talk with the kids is, I think, a, a bigger asset than just walking by them. You know, like, we, we do that. I, I did it today, and crazy hair day, everybody's walking by, you know, saying hi to everybody. But we don't get to engage them in conversation. We don't get to spend time with them one-on-one you know, -on -one or with a group of them like that. So, so that's something I'm looking at. Um, I know I'd like to do, um, it's a going up talk with the sixth grade class. They're gonna be moving up, going to seventh grade. So going in, just spending an hour or so talking with them as to safety things, social media things that we could we could talk about because they're moving up to an older age group. They're gonna be surrounded by kids that are older than them. They're not the you know the kingpin or the queen pin on, on the block anymore. They're they're now gonna be low <laughs> low on the totem pole. So um, it's it's intimidating and just I think I've I've talked to, to kids in the past one on one and just had these discussions and I think you know it, it was helpful for them to, to know what they're getting into. You know, I don't I don't want to step on parents' toes or anything like that, but uh, there's a lot of parents that that don't have those discussions with their kids about you know the social media things that are going to come up and the, you know the things that are going to be unfortunately in this day and age you know, they're going to be presented with things that 12, 13 year old kids shouldn't be presented with, but they are. So so I'd like to have that discussion with them. Um, so those are some of the ideas for, for outreach. So I don't know if, I know I didn't write something up, but as far as you know, this quarter, I know you guys wanted something official for each quarter, something that we can um, document and show well, the results to, for. Do we need to hear what your one thing this quarter is gonna be? for outreach so we can say, yeah, that sounds great. So just again, so we're following the, the agreement that we had, and so the year covered, and you know, I'm just wondering, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to, I mean, that's, that's why I kind of gave a, an idea, things, the things that I want to do. I mean, some of these things are, are gonna get done anyways, right. but. Um, What's the thing on your list that would be most 
that would create the biggest buzz around town? Um, well, obviously the safety day, that's, that's probably gonna be spring. That's gonna be huge, yes. hopefully. That's gonna be a big, big thing. I mean, that could, that's fourth quarter. Would be, that might be fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that's, yeah. that's gonna be a bigger thing for fourth quarter. Um, third quarter, um, I would say the probably the Grange meeting with you know setting up a meeting with them doing a, a class on identity theft. I, I still want to do. I'm still going to do all the other I mean, that's good. the I other things. Good, but, yeah. I like that. <laughs> that was, and that getting was it out of the school gets it out to everybody else. I like so. that. And, 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 and let's get let's get the recorder to to cover that meeting. Yeah. Because then it gets to the broader population that may not make it to the Grange meeting. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the scoop should be in mailboxes. The last week of February, going like uh, February 28th, March 1st ish. Yeah. Um, so it could be a February date, but a March date would be yeah. perfect to keep it in this quarter if that's uh, if the grade yeah. is amenable to that. Yeah. And they sort of end in March as spring is blooming. Yeah. And I think the, you know, the report, I got to reach out anyways because he's one of my potential ride alongs that he wants to actually do with like, a story. Oh, That'd be cool. cool. So come and do a ride along and interview and okay. put something in the, oh, in the paper about it. Yeah, but so. that's happening in March because the scoop is getting the scoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the scoop's getting let's, the let's do Let's do late March. Okay. When you can schedule that, but let's let's do that. That'd, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah, I can work with them on that. Okay, what else? Should, what else um, I've got... I've got some other things on the list just to kind of give you an update as to what's going on in the department. I mean, training things that we've got going on, I can give you the list of all the things that we're doing for training. I can, one of the things that I did want to touch on, I just I don't want to skip it, is the um, our record management update. The, uh, we call it the IMC, it's the Information Management Corporation. That's what it used to be. It's now TriTech. But that's what <clears throat> we've talked about it before, our record management system, which um, Everything we do, all of our incidents, all of our arrests, all of our citations, they get entered into a computer database. So that's our computer database. And we talked about getting up online where we're connected with our shower control dispatch. Um, so this is was part of the information sharing thing that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. We're posting the logs, that, you know, our weekly logs or however you want to do it. <clears throat> and not really having the ability to do that without it being extremely time consuming. We've been kind of waiting for this record management system thing to kick off. So um, once this kicks off, what we'll be able to do is everything that we do, our daily log, everything that we do in a log will be entered into this computer database. And then it's just a simple click of the button. We print out a press log is essentially what it is. I can take that press log and post it on our website. That pretty much says everything that we do. It'll say house check on River Road. It'll say, you know, alarm call, you know, whatever address. You know, we can have that just generic information there, whether you arrested somebody, whether you stopped a car, whether you did a building check, whether you did whatever it is that you do. It gives a more accurate representation of all of the things we do as opposed to just, like for January example, we had um, 31 incidents that we, incident reports that we generated for calls that we had. So that's 31 incidents. But on average, we average about five or 600, between five and 600 um, calls, if you want to call it that. But things that we do, whether it's the house check, whether it's stopping and talking to somebody, whether it's going to the school and doing something like that, all the things that we do aren't documented in that you know those 31 we're not writing a report for every single thing that we do so this will give us more accurate representation so we've been talking about it for two years because the state got involved and it just turned into a, a bigger thing it's going kind of statewide now but that being said next tuesday i have our first training date that we're going to for this new system i've been told once i go to that first class we'll be up online being able to and put our data and put some master names that we have that are in our system now. So we'll be able to start plugging information into that. And within within a month or so, we should be going live because there's already five departments that have gone live with it that are using it now. 
we're in the phase two or the next five departments. So that's going to be happening within the next month or so. That's a kind of a for sure thing. This is the closest that we've come to an actual date. Yeah, so that, that'll be huge. That'll be a big thing. So I would say, I mean, if, if you want to call it the safe bet to start July 1st, I'm hoping that I can start sooner, but July 1st would, you know, posting logs on our, on our Facebook page and getting that information out there. And then probably covering your time. Yeah, yeah I, another quick question. Sure. Uh, when, when the ambulance comes to uh, any resident in town, whether it's South County or anybody else, <coughs> are you usually there with the ambulance? Yes, we respond to all medical calls and all fire calls. You as do? Well. Yeah. Okay, and if the property is locked, who, who enters? Does, do you do that or does the ambulance be? Um, well, it's usually us. I mean, if, okay. if we know that there's a medical emergency inside and I have to get in, yeah. I'm getting in. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to wait for the ambulance to, to get in. We we almost had it last week. I had a call for a welfare check. The person hadn't been seen for two or three days. I went to the house, knocked on I'm actually trying to, after talking to the neighbors and seeing if there's a key or somebody I could contact, there was no way. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get into the house without causing the least amount of damage and the person came to the door. <laughs> We're like five seconds away from replacing a window in your in your house. It wasn't the EMS wasn't coming to that. No, no. This was just a hey. We haven't seen him in two or three days. Yeah. You know, he took a bad fall. I don't know if he's okay. So it's, we got to get in there to to check on him. So we, I, yeah, I've had to throw my shoulder into a number of doors. Okay, just curious. Has to get in. Just don't get hurt. Yeah. Lock the door before you call. Right? We've got creative ways to get in. Yeah. Yeah. It starts with kicking it. In. <laughs> That's too hard. And you throw it's your shoulder. There's there's better ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's part of that. It's part of that security assessment thing. We know how to break into your house. We can tell you how to not get your house broken. Well, if you do it too well, you can't break in. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. Okay, Jim. Thanks. All right. Sure. Thanks, Jim. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Let us know when that date is for the. For the great oh, absolutely yeah okay i'm gonna get i'll work on that tomorrow actually so i can get it into the, the yeah. swoop as soon as possible yeah and i'll send the reminder again tonight okay awesome. just a quick question sure when you're doing a security check or, or you're checking on an elderly person and there's unsecured uh, firearms what's your what's your procedure for that if there's unsecured when we're, we're going in to check on them we we have we have a box of um, locks, cable locks, in the trunk of the cruiser. If there was something unsecured in the house, technically it's illegal, but you know if they're, we're there for a medical purpose or something, I'm not going to drag them out while we're treating them in handcuffs. So you know, we would just lock. let them know what the law is, take a cable out, lock the gun up. And, I mean, if you got a house full of them, then we're going to have a conversation when you get out of the hospital. It'll be something different. But but yeah, we have we have boxes of cables that we could help secure and we give them away all the time so that's a good question do you, do you check on permits when that transpires or now it depends on the situation um the, the small town people there i know there's people in town that they just haven't renewed their permit or something like that it's been you know they forgot about it it's been a year or whatever yeah i'll get in and get it done you know they've got a, a shotgun in their in their house that they've had since they were a kid or whatever. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go kicking in doors and no, but they need a permit. They they need to have a permit, yeah. But it's it's not something we're gonna go in and right take legal action. Oh, yeah, 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 no. We're gonna charge you. Sort of a reminder, sort of yeah. a hey, you got yeah. No, we give we give them the reminders, yeah. And sometimes we'll just it's it's as simple as going online and doing it. Now we have to do it at the station, but you know I. I Tell people, you know, I've got an application in, in my bag and in, in the cruiser. It's like, here, let's just sit down, let's fill this out. I'll go back to the station, I'll get it started for yeah. you, and yeah. then we'll go from there. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Back to Jim. Sure. Okay. Moving on, old business. Uh, first time town hall project update and discussion. Uh, you want to start, Fred? You well, we, okay. I will attend the last. Yeah, we've been having. Meetings, well, it started as, as every two weeks with the general contractor and some of the subs, and then in between, it's every week meetings with uh, some of the subs of some of the details that are clear in the plans on 
locks, what kind of doors you want, what kind of locks you want, security issues, color of paint on windows, things like that. Uh, project is moving along. The, the uh, stair tower in the back is, is up. Uh, the windows are in it and uh, they're about ready to pour the concrete floor on that. Inside, uh, the floor is still, uh, I want to say, uh, ripped up in parts of it for making improvements to the, to the foundation and the, and the structure. Uh, most of the work now is on, is on the bathrooms, uh, fixing up the floor. And the floor was in bad shape, so they had to take out the, all the floor joists, put in new beams, uh, footings for the front of the beams, and putting new floor joists in. So that's their, their focus now is to do that so that the plumbing guys can come in do that. The heating guys were there this week and the electrician was there looking at some of the details uh, of the building. So uh, yeah, things are moving along. Uh, as far as uh, the cost, yeah, there's been some minor cost overruns. We, we keep in track of that. Uh, can't say there's, there's some uh, additional ones in the works now, but going to have a meeting probably next week to decide whether we have enough money to to continue with the existing contract and then possibly what to do with the the ad alternate number one which was for the sidewalk and parking lot in front of the building so that hasn't been approved yet for construction because we don't have funds for that so uh, so we're probably going to have a, a warrant article, I'm thinking, for additional funds if we decide to complete that, that part of the project. So, uh, yeah, th uh, things are moving along. No major surprises. Little things are coming up here and there that you couldn't put on a plan or it came up once you could see it in the building. So. But they've been agreeable to make changes, and uh, Jones Woodset Architects has been there right along, uh, making sure it's things in the, in the specifications are being followed. If there's questions, they're following up with the with the contractor and also with their uh, either plumbing. Uh, what do I want to say? Their uh, engineer, I, I guess, structural engineer. Most of them. To, to find out the best options for things. So, uh, I guess I don't see any major delays in a project, and I, that I, they don't either. So, I think we should be on schedule for May or June completion. Okay. So, I don't know, Brian, do you have anything else? No, I think it's it's, it's been going along well. Okay. Okay. Moving on, complete streets committee, appointment of members. Ryan, you gave us a, a list here. Yeah, those are the folks that have agreed to okay. serve on the complete streets committee. <coughs> which, if you recall, is to work with the um, Frank Regional Council of Governments to do yeah. what we call to complete the prioritization plan that's required by Mass DOT so the town would be eligible for tier three, which is actual construction funding. So those are the folks um, that have agreed to serve. Joyce, um, unless, I believe the wording was unless Jonathan had a strong objection, right. he would do it. Hearing none, <laughs> um, I guess that's. Um, Keith Bardwell would be the highway representative. Larry Ashman would be one of the at-large representatives. Don Sluter for the planning board. Donna Wiley for the historical commission. Fred Barron for the finance committee. And the person I reached out to for the other at-large position and yet to uh, respond. Although I saw him the other night and I forgot about last, it. Yeah. I saw him last night. That was Monday night, right? Yeah. Wasn't that, it wasn't last night, it was Monday night that we saw him. Yeah, it's, been, it's yeah. Had I known, I, I forgot. I, yeah. it would, Me too, honestly. Last. I hate like, I. So I would, I would hope that we could move forward with these folks and we can appoint more representative at that time just so we can get the process process rolling. 
and if this one doesn't uh, accept, uh, are you looking to have others in mind? Or? Um, I think we have we had that we had put together that list of names at the last meeting. Yeah. yeah okay. Which I don't have it with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were thinking about distribution around town, right. different uh, parts of town. Okay, well, I, I, no problem agreeing with, with these committee members here. Well, I'll second that. Motion I'm, I'm second. finding out from Paul right now. <laughs> okay. Paul well, wasn't going to mention him. Yeah. Well, I didn't say last name. Okay, so we all agree, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's a great list. Okay, moving on. Next AMP Solar Pilot Agreement, Long Plain Solar and uh, Whaley Renewables. So negotiations have, negotiations have finished with Nexamp and um, we finally have the I agreed upon the pilot agreement um, between the town and Nexamp for um, the Whaley Renewables solar project and the uh, Long Plain solar project. Who moved more, us or them? Who what? <laughs> Who moved more, us or them? Oh, they moved a lot. They moved a lot. Good for them. They moved to where we asked them on the very first day. They moved to there. They kicking and screaming, but they moved. And these would be, these would be signed. Just I think this great. Just Fred. Good, good job, you guys. Hopefully, they bought their panels early. Oh, I'm sure they had those in the. Yeah. So so just for comparison storage. purposes, their initial offer was was around seven dollars a kilowatt hour. Um, that's when they first came in. Right. They, once we hired the consultant, it went up. When they it went first up to seven fifty. But we add yes, and then we asked for about ten per kilowatt hour uh, because that's what they gave half people. <laughs> and then they said, "Oh, we could never, ever, ever do that." And now we're at like nine dollars and seventy or ninety-five cents or something. Nine dollars and ninety-three. So they were well, good to their word. They could never do ten. They could never do ten. So, so technically, so yeah. I feel like we were like twenty-seven cents away. <laughs> uh, so it, uh, so first-year payment for the for the uh, log plane solar will be twenty almost twenty-six thousand dollars year one, and that will escalate two and a half percent each year. And the first-year payment for Whaley Renewables is um, twelve thousand six hundred ninety-six. That's the smaller array. Uh, that's a smaller um, array. So I think it was definitely worth the, the short-term investment in uh, Beth Greenblatt to yep. educate us and take us through this process. Yep. Yep. Very nice. And these payments won't start until it's completely installed and running. Yeah. Right? Just, no, just it's up running. and running. running. Which could uh, any indication when that will happen? They were hoping to start well, one of them this spring. Is, is what I had understood. So we'll see cash sometime this fall. Next fiscal year. Should yeah, be. Next fiscal year. Yeah, so yeah, next, next fiscal, fiscal year. year. So we won't year. we won't realize those total lump sums from either. Probably there'll be the free cash that gets certified the next year. Right. Right. At some proportion of that twenty and change and twelve and change. Yeah. Right. Based on calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that quarter. Well, yeah. It probably says in here if it's quarterly or. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Moving on. East Whateley School Lot uh, request for proposal. Brian is uh, sent us here a copy of their uh, RFP going out for. So. Yeah. Our our original intent was for this to go out fairly soon, but the school has requested more time. Um, for it to be ready for for theirs for their end to go out, so they want based on the, the timing, we can talk about this at next meeting, or we can talk about it now. I, I guess I thought we were going to try to do a joint RFP. What happened? I don't think we can. Why? Why not? State law. Serious? Yeah. Explain. Yeah. Because there, there's two separate ownerships. We can do it simultaneously, but I don't think. Yeah, but that's what strategic join. partnerships are all about. You have a memorandum of understanding, and okay. Well, where are we going to put one out? Though? Yeah. We can do we can do it simultaneously, but the documents are. The documents is part of the RFP. Is and, and I'm not going to read it all now, but it's part of the language in, in each RFP that 
Um, there's a dram dramatic weight given to proposals that take advantage of both lots. That would be certainly a lot. A lot of in ours, it's not. In ours, it's generic as to future use of the property. We can even get more well, we, specific in the language if we want. Well, I, I think that what you're talking about doesn't have to be necessarily in the RFP. We can certainly let that be known. But but don't you want to be as flexible as possible? I don't think that either. I, I think you're encouraging the creativity of the responders by leading the horse to the water and saying this is what, this is how we deem the best use of our collective properties, and that would be a, a joint purpose. Um, I, and I think in a, in a point system, if you acknowledge that we are going to give more points to proposals that take advantage of both lots, then people will think, oh, if I really want to win this, then maybe I should be entrepreneurial about what my creative use can be for the, for, for the lot at large. That's that's my point. Uh, but, but we also got to think about if we get a we get an offer, a proposal for our parcel, and Frontier doesn't. I, I guess we've got to decide: do we, do we, what do we do with our, with our proposal? And 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 vice versa. I mean, if they get one and we don't, uh, by tying them together, uh, you may scare people away. Well, that's sort of my point. You get a proposal for both lots. I I I, I don't think we should make that a. a it is a consideration, but I don't think that should be a major consideration. Because I can say, if there's more, I say more expense in their lot to, to create something than there is in our lot. I get that, but remind so, me, r remind me, Brian, what's the access to our lot? What's the parking for our lot if their lot gets sold? Does our lot become unusable? Our lot has front on River Road. Doesn't have parking on the road. Yeah, well, that's what you're using it for. You have to make it. I, I, but, yeah, the but, ability to make it, you don't have the parking. But you don't have parking. So even 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 the current rec uses it would be impossible to, to realize. The rec use is protected through an easement on the property. Parking's not. Yes, parking is. So we could still use that lot, assuming the parking survives their their purpose and their construction and their <coughs> landscape. The easement has language that, that preserves parking. Yeah. But if parking doesn't exist, how does the easement well, preserve that? Okay. I don't think they can. I don't think they can right. take the parking away. Just looking at this, um, the evaluation criteria are listed, and one of them is very broad, and I think it covers what you're worried about. Any other criteria considered relevant by the town of Whateley? Yeah. So proposals will be evaluated by purchase price, reuse and its impact, proof of financial commitment, timeliness, um, of the development, proposer interviews, and then number six is any other criteria considered relevant by the town of Whateley. And I think keeping it flexible yeah. is probably not a bad thing. I think it's right. easy. I mean, clearly you're going to be talking to people. We can unambiguously let them know that one of the things that helps us is that if both lots are used, and that will be considered, we can say that. That is something that is important to the town, relevant to the town of Whateley. So I, I don't think we have to change up the document a lot, is what I'm saying. Okay, but what happens if, I mean, the the, the parking, the, the, the rec is, is allowable, but... But, it, I mean, and, a, a new, this is, this is new really use. broad. I know, but it's this a new is use. Really I, I guess I just... I don't understand how you sell one without the other. I, I just don't get it. You might not, but it, I mean, if I think take a look at this. We'd have to take a look at it because it really says, we reserve proposals. the right to reject all proposals or cancel the RFP, the RFP if it's determined to be in the best interest of the town of Whateley. You know, but, but boom, we, then we, don't, we, we, can, we can impose that criteria. If their lot is sold and our lot is not sold, uh -huh. That to dramatically limits the potential of our lot. You know, we don't have control well, over that because we don't own it. Yeah. 
And, and okay, doesn't, so we can discuss a lot wrong. of things that we don't have control over. Doesn't mean but, that I'm wrong. No, but I don't. I'm not saying you're. I'm saying we don't have control over it. I'm not saying you're wrong. Well, so it's my my. That's my point. To we, we should be doing a joint RFP. The the, well, the, the only thing tying the two together is is the ball field. And but if the the proposal for for their lot doesn't care about our lot, in a way you could you could see that as as a benefit because we could get rid of the septic. You wouldn't have the the rec field there, the ball field there, but we would have a viable building lot right there on River Road. If you could convince the purchasers. To the purchasers realize that they can move the septic, right. right? And the ball field is, is gone. Why would they the buy the field with the septic? Because they already have the easement. Well, they, they wouldn't, and, no. and yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, look, we don't, we don't control fire. all of this. Yeah. We, we, you, yeah. you know, yeah. we have asked to right. do it together. That hasn't worked out. I, I believe Brian, when he says there is a it, we can't I, really do them to, as I'm one not, RFP, and I we've been talking about this yeah. for months and months and months. Yeah, and it just doesn't seem. I, I feel like we're beating a dead horse right here. Right, we're, we're I, I no, but this is the first time. And this forgive me if I miss something. <laughs> no, let me finish. This is the first time that I've heard that doing a joint RFP is not possible, and 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 I thought we were going to try to to create language that made this as viable a combined lot as possible to maximize the number of people who might be interested in this lot. To, to sell one without the other dramatically limits the potential use of the other lot. It's why things work best when you work as a team as opposed to individuals. Well, let me say, Brian and I met with, with their their committee or whatever to Frontier to talk about this, and, and that came up, and they were not supporting a a, a, a joint RFP. It was, and we left that meeting that agreeing that each each owner would do their own thing simultaneously. And but did they give a reason? Well, other, other than. What, what what Brian was saying that I think he knew before the, the legality of doing it and but again they didn't, they didn't really question or or support I guess the the need to do one RFP they were not really looking at it that way they still want to do their own individual one and we do ours at the same time so so this doesn't prevent us from We need two separate RFPs. It doesn't. It doesn't stop us from presenting the project as a whole. No, it doesn't prevent us, but it's not. And, and I, I so, 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 there's, so, so there's two separate purchase sale agreements that need to be entered into. Of course, there is, but there needs to be. You need, the town of Blake needs to accept a bid. Frontier needs to accept a bid for their prospective property. It doesn't mean that we can't. Whenever we, whenever we hand these out, or whenever we post this online, or whenever we run the ad in the, in the recorder, that we can't have something that says whatever the description is. I think that we, represents it as an entire project. We should be encouraging, to every extent possible, the, the, the combined use. I agree. And, and, and I don't think that we're doing that in, entirely. I, I, I just don't, and if the schools don't want to do it, shame on them. No, I, I think the way it's written gives us that, that option without emphasizing that. I don't think we need to emphasize joint use, because it may not come to that. I mean, we could get two independent proposals that have nothing to do with, with joint use. Good. And, and the other thing, we, we have Waitley has the right of first refusal, right, on, on their parcel, but they don't on ours, right? We have an outstanding offer. We can go down there tomorrow with a dollar, and I'm sure they'd probably sell it to us. Right. So that could be a potential third option, is to, is to get the quote on tearing the building down. Right. Well, we got so them we down. have a wall field, 
parking or not whatever yeah we, we it just some, opens up opportunities we got some kind of we have a, an estimate on that so but continuing with what Brian said if we got an offer for on our parcel and they didn't get anything we could <coughs> sell ours and exercise the right of first refusal on their parcel and sell it to that proposal if they wanted it for for joint lot two lots yes. right for that extra dollar if we wanted yeah, I guess we, that, you that that is, take is possession a, of the building pardon if we exercise the option yeah we would have to take possession well, of the building right yeah. and yeah well my yeah. preference would be that whoever wanted it from us could get it from get it from there from well, here without us having to right right okay well i Let's keep going. Okay. Uh, so you need you need a decision to your plan is to to advertise this on what February seventh? No. I'm no. Not. Okay. Not not till. That's, that's what I was planning on doing. But You've been that's doing. Okay. Changed. And they're delaying it because of their budget season or something. <coughs> they were pushing us before. Yeah. Because right. theirs is not ready. Theirs is not ready. Their dog ate their homework. <laughs> okay, so do we need any more information from Brian before we act on this, let's say before the next meeting? We wait till next meeting. I, what I was, what I read of it makes it seem very flexible. We still keep all of our options. We don't, um, we don't really give anything up with what's written here. I'm not an expert at RFP, but this has been looked at by council. Presumably, or or it's been looked at by um, experts in RFPs. I'm, yes, it's it's modeled after it's modeled existing after RFPs. existing RFPs. Yeah. The purchase sale agreement is from council, which is right. That's the important, the more important document. Okay. And it's is there a reference to the other parcel in here? Specifically? It's the I first part of underneath the back uh, background page one. Okay. Section 1A background that first okay. that first paragraph talks about right, line two. Okay. the lot so. and references the. I think that was the the RFP to be yeah. right, and it talks about the other lot. Okay, frontier contact. Okay. <coughs> the only. If it's, if it's a, a difference or it could come about it later on is, is our parcel is is on well, both parcels are on Christian Lane and if ourselves independent of the other whenever we have to change the deed to River Road you couldn't, well I, I know that's something we could it would, later it would on. need to change the address change the address whatever okay it, it probably it probably should have been done a while back when the lot was separated, separated because right back. now it's not a Christian. <clears throat> right. That's internal. Yeah. yeah. Internal. Okay. okay. Uh, electricity aggregation for COG Energy Committee recommendations. So we requested more information from FERCOG uh, about the program, and I have yet to hear back. And the Energy Committee has a meeting scheduled for the end of February to continue the discussions. Okay, so we're waiting for more info. Yeah. Just to make sure I understand what we decided on the school lot, we're, are we given Brian authority to go ahead with the, the RFP as written? I Can don't see any problems with okay. it as written. Okay, I don't, I don't either. And Jonathan? You guys do what you want to do. Okay. Right. Short, crap was short sighted. Okay. Uh, new business. Fiscal year 2019 budget planning. I wanted to give you guys a, a revised copy of the schedule. Okay. Here. Um, it just switches February 20th and the 27th. The other, yeah, that's okay. the other email that you sent. Yeah. That's, and that's based on the availability of the school administration. Okay. 
at this point, I know I won't be here for the 6th, and I probably will not be here for the 20th of March. March. Okay, now let me just double check. So we have the 20th. Do you want me to move the rec commission to a different different time? Um, that would probably so, so much fun. make sense. I mean, it's I can't imagine it's going to be a sticky wicket. Okay. Um, so you're saying the meeting is no longer on the 20th? It's on the 27th. That was only change. That's the one that was changed. Right? It, 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 it shifted around some of the topics, but. Okay. Yeah. Okay. February 20th has changed. Yeah. Um. Okay. You know, school is uh, anything to the finance committee? I know they keep thinking they're um, supposed to be getting something. Yeah. In terms of in terms of budgets, that's what's up. What's the twenty seventh? The meeting for that for the schools. Yeah, the, the uh, finance committee had wanted the budget earlier. Yeah. So they've got the finance committee has access to a copy of the budget or the draft of the it. first the first version one uh, version one V one right. So I know the school committee has it for sure. Yes. Um, so, the finance <coughs> uh, last year, as I recall, Tritown Beach did not come to the finance committee meeting that was scheduled. Is that uh, correct? I think that's correct. I don't, I don't even recall that I have a final budget till till the end. Okay. Moving on, Brookhart <coughs> District Local Great Technical Assistance Request. So, which so this is the. Now, this is a new request for this, is not continuing from last year. So, this is, this, is, this is what we agreed to do when we were talking with Jessica and Peggy is that we would apply for a 2018 LTA funds. We were going to do a charrette, weren't we? Yeah, to continue that okay. economic development charrette. Yeah. Um, we also have a request from the planning board that the town submit a request for assistance with zoning bylaws um, oh. as well. And that was the, the thing from Don. Would they be competing with one another in terms of being accepted? I would, I would suggest that the select board prioritize the relative request. Well, if, if we don't do this right, I think that what we did last year was a colossal yeah. waste of money. But did we get results? Did we see the results from last year? What did we get? I don't ever see well, it. Well, it's supposed to be part of. It's supposed to be. It's it's a it's an iterative process. Right, but I thought we would at least. I think they were. Were we supposed to get results by the end of the, the year? That was not my understanding. Is that no. it would just be a continuing. Be a continuing. Process. Oh, okay. Uh, that would be my priority. Already? For. For what? For what? For that. For for that. The, the, the techno systems that was going to kind of splurge over into the following year. Um, I'll read what the scope of work said, and I haven't seen any of these. The materials to be developed by the end of December 2017 include a, an event promotional flyer and drop a newsletter article for town staff and municipal officials, introductory PowerPoint for the event, maps of Waitley with sub areas identified for use in small group exercise, posters to be used in small. So it was. Most things, items of preparation for the plan, Sharon. Right. Okay, and without a date, though. We do not have a date yet of when we want to do that. So the promotional items didn't have a date, so they weren't true marketing yeah. materials. Okay, so. Right, right. So, uh, would it would it be premature to try to select a date, or try to get, at least get out a range for a date? I. We should I, be setting a date. We should be setting a date. And is this something that's going to be happening, say, after the town meeting arises? Or is this before? It can happen any time. Um, I don't think we're going to lose many people. Or mid June, either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That'll be a little bit more relaxed. I think a lot of, the, a lot of people like, are, are really busy in the budget season. 
not just us. And I assume the priority is to keep continuing this project first and then. Yeah. Yep. And that's good enough. If they can, it might be the if they can swing it, they can swing it to the bylaws. And that would be the plan board. Okay. Okay. Moving on town administrator updates. Brian. In your packet, you'll see we have money returned from the building inspection department. Of course, I can't find mine. That's way in the back. And some amount. So those are they voted refunds to each participating community. Almost they, five thousand dollars. Yeah, I think we're one of the higher ones. Oh, yeah. there it is. So that's good news. And what was the reason for that? It is government usage. Right. Past years, I think, doesn't it? Um, Some average usage, I think so. I think we had a big spurt in usage associated with this building coming online and town hall, or some combination. There's a big spurt, so you you get assessed based on what you've done recently, and then right. since all of that usage has now gone a little bit into the past, the period that they're talking about, we didn't use it as much as we had during that big spurt. So I think it was not unexpected that we. Did. They're forward funding their budget. Right, they have excess reserves and they distribute it based upon activity. Um, we had our first meeting of the water merger committee on oh, Monday. Oh, yes, I saw that. And um, there's uh, some additional research to be done, but um, there was good conversation between the water district and the uh, and the town representatives slash water commissioners. Um, and, um, I'm hopeful that we can come to some recommendation that works for everybody. What that exactly is, I'm not sure yet, but um, at least we were there talking and I thought it went pretty well. As long as we, as long as everybody agrees, I think at least of, of those two parties that it's a worthy objective. Um, we're going to be scheduling the town's audit for through FY17. That's going to happen um, at the end of April, first week of May. That doesn't really affect anybody except us staff people, uh, but that's on the calendar. And unfortunately, the town did not receive the uh, municip ADA Municipal Improvement Grant. Um, there was only $1 million in available funding. They received $9 million in requests. And uh, we were not one of the chosen few. So, um, again, Fred mentioned that uh, we'll sit down and, and crunch some numbers and see where that leaves us. Uh, but I also don't think we should just stop looking for other funds yep. and I'm not saying and I, I get what I'm saying that you know I don't want to chase fool's gold but let's not give up hope right yep well there was one other one that was it green communities that we could buy for additional we've got money on some one and there's was there an option to apply for more oh mass historic commission is in, in some years has had has had excess money that they can distribute. Yeah. I haven't heard this year. I can I can ask our project contact. But we don't need to do another resubmittal. Just just ask. They have it, it, yeah, it was excess funding in past years. I don't know what I don't know what's happened with. Okay. There's no federal money yeah, budget available. There's not a lot of federal money, yeah. especially now. There's not a lot of federal money that's coming. National in. historic. 
applied for that grant, right? For well, we were, we, award, we were awarded the we were awarded historic, historic preservation. preservation grant, but that that's from the state. But that's yeah. from the state, right? State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was that grant request for? That was for ADA. No ADA. dollar amounts. Um, Test my memory. It was over two hundred. It was over two hundred. Two forty or something. Two twenty. It was over two hundred thousand dollars. And that was in our budget, I think, right? Yeah. Well, no, that was actually no, it wasn't. that would compensate for other overruns and stuff we didn't approve yet. We still, we still so. have, we still have more than enough money to complete what we have under contract to. To, we just can't do the extras. Right right. Just can't do the extras. Right. Okay. We don't have. Well, right now the the front parking lot and sidewalk were an alternate to the project, meaning it wasn't part of the base, right. the base project. Um, I mean, my sense is, and don't quote me on this. We need to run the numbers, but I, I think we'll have some money left over from from the base project, uh -huh. um, but. Again, the project's not done, so that's. But that was a, re a really thin contingency that we um, approved this under. Yes, so. the the Friends of Town Hall have done an excellent job, and oh. they've I, they've I'll have to double check, but I think they've met their fundraising oh. goal of one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, um, but so that, that was still assumed in our very thin. That was assumed. So that wasn't in there. That was no, that was included. not in there. That was not included. It was not. No. So, it, so that'll about double our contingency. Oh, okay. I remember. Because no, okay. we no. needed money in hand to award the contract. Oh yeah, right. you, you couldn't, couldn't, right, 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 right. couldn't right. do it. Yeah. So, so, so we don't have a raise within contingency anymore. Okay. Because they've completed their fundraising objectives. It's it's paper that's not raised with them. Yeah. Or us, maybe a couple paper, a couple pieces of paper. Okay. okay. So so it's not. It's not. Uh, it's never going to be huge. But. Motion to adjourn. Second. Um, is this upper Pioneer Valley reference the important thing? That's just for your for my edification. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night.